ACAST powers the world's best podcasts. Here's a show that we recommend. I'm Jesse Cruikshank, and I've always been told I have a face for podcasting. So I launched a podcast. It's called Phone a Friend because each week I'll break down the biggest stories in pop culture. But when I have questions, I get to phone a friend. I'll phone a royal watcher to find out why Prince Harry is acting like a real housewife. I'll phone a tween to please explain euphoria. And maybe I'll even phone a Backstreet Boy to find out if I still have a chance. I don't? Okay. New episodes drop every Thursday wherever you get your podcasts. ACAST helps creators launch, grow, and monetize their podcasts everywhere. ACAST.com. Hi, Dave here, and I'm with my wife, Kathy. Hello. And you're listening to The Cinemile, where we walk home from the movies. Today we're going to see Spider-Man Far From Home. How are you feeling about this? Do you, have, do you feel like you have enough Spider-Man I, in your life? Insufficient Spider-Man? Like the last two Spider-Man movies we saw, so we saw the, the, the Marvel one with this character... About two years ago, the Marvel one with this character. Uh, you know what I mean, like Tom Holland. This, yeah, yeah, this homecoming. iteration. We went to Scroobius Pip two years. Yes. Yeah. Ago. Enjoyed that one. Then last year we watched Spider Man into the Spider Verse. Yeah. Which I loved, really loved. Amazing. So now I'm like, why would I watch now this you're like, film? Give me more Spider Man. No, and we just saw Endgame, <laughs> which was like really epic. So. To me, I think it's really unclassy of Marvel and Disney to be releasing another movie so quickly from Endgame. Like, it's just such a cash grab. Like, I think what would have been really cool is if they just write no more Avengers movies for two years. Oh, no. And, like, genuinely no, build, up a, like, build up some anticipation for the next lot of as them. As in no more any of the... Just leave it. No more Marvel movies for two years. Just, like... Like, we watched a movie called Endgame. That was completely yeah, epic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now, what, two months yeah. later? This is a Spider-Man movie? It does feel a little, like... It's just too lame. Too soon. Too yeah. soon. And, like, like one of the like one of my favourite movies of the year, and your favourite movie of the year last year, was the cartoon Into the Spider-Verse, which was so wonderful. So I just don't know what this movie could like has possibly got to offer. I'm sorry. I know I sound well, negative before I've even seen it, but, like... I'm only going because Dave wants to go. I, it's not something I would go to. I look. I you're not wrong. I definitely think there, like a bit of breathing room, would have really benefited, particularly because they've just put Endgame back in cinemas. I mean, so it's like, like they're so greedy, aren't they? Like honestly, they're so greedy. Now, to to be fair, this is actually all run by uh, Sony and Columbia Pictures, so this isn't actually Marvel Studios. As such, they own the rights to Spider-Man. Yeah, but it's the it's, same actors, the same universe. It's done in association the with thing. them, so yeah, it is all part of a, a plan, and that would have been carefully. Like they would know, not placed, be doing this without. They would not be doing this without like Disney and Pixar or Disney and Marvel sign off. I think. I think um, there was no. But I think there was a bit of pushback from memory that Sony did want to release this in the summer, and they d- Disney did want to push back. Anyway, doesn't matter. Um, Are you excited? I am. I'm excited. I've been. Try- I, I love Spider-Man. I love uh, these movies. I agree. There's pro- like a, l- a little bit of breathing room would probably have been nicer. I'm still on the end game high, so like I'm I'm invested. Um, and we had Captain Marvel this year as well already, didn't we? Like it feels like yeah, before end game. It does feel like uh, it's too much. starting to be a bit like they're taking over cinema a little much. But um, but I like Tom Holland. I like these characters. I've been trying so hard to stay free of any material. I haven't seen any trailers for this. But um, I thought you I told me that you knew it. that there was going to be um, multiple universes in this one. Well, yeah. So one of the tr- this is the problem, right? You can't like as as far as you as 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 far as you can get like avoiding trailers. There's still posters and there's still Twitter and people like apparently in the latest one there was a reference to a multiverse. Uh, so we could be facing into some sort of spider verse live action situation who knows who whatever knows, anyway yeah. um, I am excited I'm looking forward to this I'm I'm, I'm pumped so okay. let's go in well I hope you're right and I'm wrong I hope it's good <laughs> I, <laughs> I mean, don't like to obviously go hope it's good. good two yeah. hours and nine minutes of our lives yeah. let's hope we enjoy them um, but you did hear there's a good end credit sequence right so we are going to stay for that oh yeah you got to stay yeah. for the end credits thing <laughs> alright let's go alright bye bye 
Heads up, Nick Fury's calling you. I don't really want to talk to Nick Answer Fury. Phone. Why? Because if you don't talk to him, then I have to talk to him. I don't want to talk to him. You sent Nick Fury to voicemail? I gotta go. You do not ghost Nick Fury. What up, dorks? What's up? We're just talking about the trip. I'm here in St. Marco Polo's. Oh, I think MJ really likes me. I remember when I first fell in love. You're a very difficult person to contact, Spider-Man. This is Mr. Beck. We could have used someone like you on my world. New world? Beck is from Earth, just not ours. The snap to our hole in our dimension. You're saying there's a multiverse? We have a job to do, and you're coming with us. Under the sea. <laughs> Under the sea. That's where it's meant to. That's where it's meant to take it from, from me. me. There's a busker. So and he's we, so much better than the movie we just saw. We didn't go to Spider-Man. We just went home and watched The Little Mermaid. <laughs> oh, um, I, I, actually, there was some Little Mermaid news this week. Yeah, First of all, that. there's a live-action remake of that. Surprise! Which I did. I didn't know about. Did you know about that? No, but like they're doing all of the movies. So oh, I know. Yeah, I, I, there's no real surprise. Like, oh, there'll be a live-action Toy Story next. Um, Anyway, on to Spider-Man. Spider-Man! <laughs> far from home. I mean, honestly... How are you feeling? Vindicated? I, I, just, <laughs> I actually just... As I, like, as I said, I actually really enjoyed the last one. Thought it was fun and fresh. Yeah. I was just like, I'm so bored of this movie. It was like, I would say... Like, I was trying to think of words to describe it as I was pay- watching it. Like, dull, <laughs> tedious, boring... Uninteresting. Did I say dull already? I think you I did. did. I've run out of words now. It was just were you so ju- were you boring. Just on, I noticed you were on the thesaurus for most of the movie, <laughs> um, typing in dull. Honestly, I just—it was a, just a complete waste of time. The movie, like, there's no good can come of it. Um, it had, it had no fun, which I was kind of the very least I would have expected a bit of fun from this movie. Um, Don't agree with that. It felt like really desperate like a cash dra- cash grab is exactly what I felt like I really like MJ so she's played by Zendaya who's a really cool actress she's great who is like so huge right now you know she's in that HBO show that everyone's talking about Euphoria which hasn't launched here yet yeah um, which and is she supposed was to be in, like really explicit it's supposed to be really hardcore a show about teenagers like on sex and drugs and apparently people our age who watch it now just makes them feel really old um, and she was in like Greatest Showman like she's huge she's like a Disney um, she was a Disney she, star she's as a, a kid. singer as well yeah, like, yeah she's huge and she's brilliant like, I love her as MJ so yeah, I really enjoyed awesome. her um, but yeah it just felt so tired like all the stuff with like Give me a few more synonyms for tired. <laughs> like all the stuff with like Exhausting. Nick Fury and Kobe Smulders, who I don't know her name in this, but she's Robin from How I Met Your Mother. Hill. All that stuff was really boring. We've seen it loads of times. Stuff with Hoppy was really boring. Stuff with Aunt May was really boring. Who's Hoppy? What's his name? Um, Rob, uh, the Starks, that's Happy. Bessie. Happy. Um, I thought there was like a su- uh, superhero frog and that there I missed. was a villain. I don't know if it's a spoiler or not who plays the villain. Didn't think anything Hang was on. a villain. Um, and then... What really pissed me off, and I'll get to once we're in a really echoey um, tunnel. What really pissed me off, and we'll get to Spoiler Street, is I thought, like. Don't, don't talk any plot details till we get to Spoiler okay. Street. Okay. Yeah? Because people are very sensitive But I said it in the intro already. Included. I said it in the intro already. Okay, go on. You know the way we had said that, like, the Spider Verse was going to be in it? I thought that was pathetic, what they did with that. Um, and I really think it's after the, off the back of that cartoon, which is so amazing, they should be ashamed of themselves, to be quite frank. Oh, wow! It's fucking awful, like, and pardon my friend. I think it's the worst of any of these movies I've ever seen. It was that boring and pointless. I and can't, the what, end, you, you just told them they should be ashamed of themselves. The very end, right? At the post credit scene. Don't come, don't you wait till we're it. I'm just saying, street. like, they You're threw in something me. exciting in the end, and it's like, you wait till the post credit scene to put something exciting in the movie. Yeah. Like it, we sat through two I hours. I really want to talk about all that, so wait. Okay, park we'll talk it. about it. Park, Peter Parker. And there was that. one scene I liked in the movie, and it made me cry. And Did that you cry was in the last five minutes of the movie? I did notice your thesaurus was looking a bit <laughs> wet towards the end. So there was a scene. There was a scene in the last five minutes of the movie that I enjoyed. So I'm really glad I stuck it out for that scene. But maybe I was just crying with relief because I knew it was going to be over soon. <laughs> wow. My back was really sore for like the last 20 minutes of the movie. I had to go you stand disappeared. in the corner of I, the cinema. I thought you'd walked out because <laughs> I could tell you weren't enjoying yourself. Like, because you, I don't know if um, you know this, but your, your whole, like, you give off an aura 
when you're not enjoying a movie. Was it when I turned to you and said, this is really shit? Like, yes. yes. It was that, and then I, tr- I just intuited <laughs> And then you thought I that, left. That you but thought I was just was really standing shit. in the corner because my back was sore. I thought she'd left, folks. I thought she was just, like, gone. <laughs> I'm done. Last 20 minutes, Kathy just was gone. <laughs> anyway, what did you think of it? I am disappointed. I didn't think it was very good. Um, I don't... I think you're being... I mean, I don't have these kind of... <laughs> Oh, this really very strong here. reaction that you're having. Sorry, we're in a train station. Um, I, I don't have the strong reaction that you're having at all. I thought it was. No, but my reaction isn't strong. It's just like it was so dull. You said this. You said it was awful, and they should be ashamed of themselves. Yeah, because they've every money in the world and every talent in the world to make a decent movie, and they've just blown it. Well, that's exactly it. That's what's disappointing because a they have all the right ingredients. B they've made this recipe before same bloody director same actors I think it's the same writers Um, they've got all these components they've got this very established MCU formula and it's like they just didn't follow the instructions Um, but this is like deflated after Endgame deflate deflated is a a great word nothing could really follow it but this really did a very poor job of following it but the thing is it tries to be it knows it can't live up to Endgame and they they sort of you know in in a clever move try and make it a smaller story in many ways Uh, in a similar way to to Iron Man 3 after um, the first Avengers Iron Man 3 was the first movie to come right after the Avengers where they all had this big meet up and epic battle and they made that very small and low key and and and, you know he largely doesn't have his powers and um and I think that that movie was great. Um, and, and making the stakes low-key can really work. But the issue is you need stakes. <laughs> you need some stakes. There aren't any in this movie. Like, it's there's... Like, oh, no, will he get to go on a school trip with MJ? It's like, sorry, I didn't realise we were watching there, a movie the, for 12 years. But actually, you can... You can... Ro- you, can dra- you can pull some, like, emotional and character peril and stakes from those kind of situations which they kind of tried to do but didn't like I wasn't invested in anything in this movie really it was all just I just felt like it was flat deflated is it's the perfect word for this and that's not to say it's not like completely without I don't think it's terrible I don't think it's without merit I were you bored I though when laughed. I was bored I, I laughed several times I thought there was a lot of funny moments in this um I thought Jake Gyllenhaal was was great uh, as Mysterio, um, and I really like everything they did. Oh, with that his was good. I'm not sure let's, if that's. I didn't know if that was a spoiler or not. Talk, that Jake Gyllenhaal let's talk was in about, it. No, well, he's on the poster. I'm going to say it's not a spoiler. Okay, right, because I hadn't seen it um, before, so I didn't know. Yeah, I, think, I, just I agree Jake with you. Jake Gyllenhaal was a waste. Like, and I'm a big fan of him as an actor. I just thought. I guess one of the things I was thinking is at this point this franchise is just spewing famous people at it isn't it like they just will throw anyone who's famous at this franchise now and actually what used to be cool about it was we had people like Chris Hemsworth and like Tom Hiddleston who weren't really that famous and like when Robert Downey Jr. initially came in he was a bit of a gamble and and now it's just like oh what next famous person can go in you know what I mean it's just like I don't agree who are you referring to? every movie it's like oh it's Tilda Swindon oh it's Oh, okay. uh, Robert Redford. Oh, it's Michelle Pfeiffer. Michelle, like Michael it's just Douglas. all right. Okay. We get it. Like you can get famous people, but like to what end? Like I don't think Jake Gyllenhaal did anything because he wasn't given anything to do. That no, that just somebody else could have done. You know what I mean? Like, Fine, but I he brought like it was a he brought something to it, and he was he was acting the hell out of it and having fun. I thought, and I enjoyed him. I enjoyed him. Fine, like. I enjoyed Zendaya. I thought she. I thought this is a version of Mary Jane that is immensely more enjoyable than Kirsten Dunst um, I mean make her the star make her Spider-Gwen like it's just after watching Into the, Spi- there. After watching Into the Spider-Verse it just felt really boring to yeah. go back and have our Spider-Man be this like teenage Whole, white boy 100% agree like, like it was crap like, Spider-Verse was just this like left field like uh, breath of fresh air and this just felt like Homecoming the first one of these also had a bit of that it felt fresh yeah, it felt like it oh fun. finally we have a teenage Spider-Man they actually felt like teenagers I know where we're going um, they actually felt like teenagers and that, 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 that carried through to this movie I still buy all of them as teenagers on a school trip that felt believable yeah that felt believable um, but, uh, but the other thing Homecoming had was 
a really strong villain with some good character and motivation. And Peter. Oh, that it had Michael Keaton, didn't it? Yeah. I remembered halfway awesome. through this movie. Oh, Michael Keaton was MJ's dad. That was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but this movie, this movie just felt like a step backwards. So the, what I thought was interesting was Homecoming spends most the the sort of journey for Peter is he wants more, right? He wants to be an Avenger. He's, and I thought this was an interesting play on it. He wants them to phone him. Um, he wants Tony to phone him. He wants to step up. He wants to be an Avenger. He wants more. And at the end of that movie, he he determines. You know what? I'm happy being friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Small stakes, New York. Ah, and they subsequently into they flipped movie. that. They but they they flipped that now, and he's ignoring, you know, um, Nick Fury's calls. He's ghosting him. Um, he doesn't. You know, it's almost like he's dealing with a similar thing to Tony Stark in Iron Man Three. It's almost like PTSD or superhero fatigue, which I think is what you're feeling as well. <laughs> I think um, we're all feeling it. He, you know, he, and he says, you know, I didn't want to save the world this summer. And I, I thought that was quite an interesting idea. He wants to step away from the stage and keep things small scale, and he just wants to kiss MJ. Yeah. So, like, I'm, I'm like, with that as his character motivation, that's a nice idea, but it's that's not really enough like, to carry be, me yeah. through through a two hour and nine minute movie. That can be a subplot which, of a different movie. Great, Spider Man's yeah. firing. I don't need to see Nick Fury trying to force him. To be an Avenger. So I, so I feel like, I feel like I had fun. I enjoyed these. I enjoy spending time with these characters. There's a lot of fun interactions with all of these characters, um, and I laughed a bit. And some of it was quite uh, clever, I guess, in parts. But like mostly, I was like, I wasn't like at no stage was I like, wow, or that's cool, or I haven't seen that before. I was just like going through the motions. This felt like a movie spinning its wheels. Like it didn't have anything fresh or inventive or exciting in it. Besides one thing we'll talk about in Spoiler Street. So will we just go to Spoiler Street? Overall, what I'm just like... Do? Like, they, like what they should have done, it's just make Zendaya. Zend- Zendaya, Spider-Girl or Spider-Woman or they'll whatever. Get there. They'll probably but, like, get there. We've seen, what, three Tobey Maguire movies? How many of the other ones did we see? With three them. Tobys, two Andrews, yeah. and two Toms. And now two of these, like, I'm done. I'm like, I'm so done with these movies. Like, honestly, I'm b- lumping them all together now. It felt fresh and different from the others, but now it's just like, you okay. know, watching that second Andrew Garfield one, it's like, yeah, I don't need to see this, really. I'm let's, grand. let's go to spoilers. Okay, spoiler so street. spoilers now for Spider-Man Far From Home, and and let's say all the MCU movies. Why do they have to case. have the word home in them all? Is that his thing? Someone in the marketing department was like, that's really clever. The next one's going to be like, the final return home. Well, what did you think about the, the Europe stuff? Because I felt like it didn't... I like the idea of... I felt like they he, wanted to get loads of grants from different European film commissions, all of which I saw in the credits as we waited for the end credit sequence. Yeah, but like, they didn't feel, they didn't really do anything interesting with the Europe Nothing stuff. Nothing interesting Nothing. I'm like, like... Honestly, we just watched Murder Mystery on FX three weeks ago. I had more fun with their European... Um, like adventures than I had with the ones in this Here's, movie. The, the problem is it didn't really. It just felt like box ticking um, tourist um, things. Like oh yeah, we see like um, Tower Bridge in London. It's all the things you'd expect it to see. Feel like remember when the, was it the last Mission Impossible was in London? That felt like that it was, was in so London. fun. Yeah, and now, we were the, loving it being in London watching it. This was just like oh great. The, but the only bit where I was like. I'm sorry, Wait, but you can use the Tower Bridge sign as a, um, oh, shield, as a shield against... That was quite cool. Against, no, no, Dave, he was using it as a shield against drones. I don't think the Tower Bridge sign is that strong. <laughs> it's been there a long time. <laughs> um, like these drones were so weak. I, I think, though, I liked... I, I liked the Netherlands bit, because there were people in that, and I liked that they acknowledged that they're very friendly. Like, it had actually something to say about... Yeah, but even then, it just felt like a big racial stereotype. Like, True, yeah. Like, Look, that's I mean, all it was. That's kind of my problem with this whole movie. I let, let's. I think I've got a lot to say. Let's start at the very beginning because this a very good place to start. <laughs> Stop. We started with the Little Mermaid, and then we're on this. I feel like the movie had to address Endgame, right? And the big universe-changing thing. And I thought when it started, I was like. They're doing this really well. Yeah, it was clever. And they did I Will Always Love You and it was like a montage. I love the, the teen... You see, there's some fun stuff in here. The, the sort of teenage uh, uh, audio and visual version of like a memorial video done with this cheesy... It was like very, very clever. Nice segue into this movie. Then you get your sort of exposition dump from the girl from the Black Mirror episode. Um, 
You, me, and Ashley. You, too. me, and Ashley too, and Miley Cyrus. Um, and I thought she was she was fun in this. Um, she was really good. Um, she was given pa- slightly more to do than she was in the Black. Pairing her up with uh, Spider Man's friend, who's also fo- like a great little character, and I, fr- I forget his name. I, d- I don't even know the character I name don't know or the anyone's name. name in this movie except Nick Fury and Spider Man. <laughs> anyway. Um, his guy in the chair. I loved their little thing of like, babe, of oh, babe. Yeah, that was <laughs> like, fun. That, that's some, they're texting each other. There's some I miss sweet you, stuff and in they're here. They're sitting next to each other, which is what teenagers do. Exactly, it's great. Like they, they nailed all that. But I liked this idea of like, right, we're going to call it the blip. Um, and they addressed a lot of the questions that we, the odd, we as an audience had coming out of Endgame, which was like, we wait, didn't everyone's need five years. Everyone's five. Half of the universe is five years older. Uh, and, and you know they, they, they it's like it felt like sort of f- fan service like oh we listened to you or we thought about this as in one of the hosts of the the teen networks like yeah my younger brother's now older than me and uh, Aunt May talks about yeah I just appeared in someone's living room and yeah, they were like yeah but that's all like we really didn't need that answer though like you know none of us were crying out for that answer we're like no, we got that I, from like the Captain America counselling session in Endgame no but I'm, I want more of that I like I think that world it's you interesting like a, a world fiction. a world with the with the blip which they've called it I think that's really interesting and I like that they add, like that's texture it, it adds texture to that's the world fine. and I like that they added in a bit of that however that just disappears then yeah and then it's like okay back to normal um, they do nothing with the sort of actual repercussions of that besides acknowledging that Aunt May is running a charity for people. The only repercussion is that a guy who was five years younger than them is now the same age as them, and he's competing for MJ's affections. Yeah, but also that doesn't matter because they they almost say that offhand at the beginning. Hey, Billy's like hot now, and everyone wants him. But it's like so. There's like nothing about his character to be like I'm fucked up because I, you know, I was here for five years and you all weren't. But also, what he's doesn't... just literally he's just a hot rival. And by the way, we're in the city and it's really loud. Um, The buses are really loud, sorry. Um, But also what I thought was a bit convenient for the plot is like that all of our core Spider-Man characters from the first movie... They all disappeared together. Disappeared, so they're all the same age, and they all just get to yeah. hang out as this ragtag group of friends. Um, I really just Even like all they, the stuff they, with the teachers. Like I thought it was all rubbish. I didn't enjoy a minute of it, even though I like the actors. Relief. It was just, well, it was just like a bad teen movie. Like if you're gonna make a teen movie, make a good one. If you're gonna make a superhero movie, make a good one. Don't just give us this shit. Like it's kind of neither here nor there. The, I was really cross watching it. Like the problem just is, blown it. the problem is with all that stuff, and it is all the stuff with the teachers and them on the holidays. So boring. It's all played for laughs, right? And I, and to be fair, I think that the hit rate was quite low on a lot of that stuff. But, Sorry, this road is so loud. But that's the problem. Spider-Man, the way they positioned Homecoming, and this feels largely consistent in terms of tone, is like, this is light and fun, and it's a teenage comedy, bit of romance, um, but it's light-hearted and enjoyable. And that's good, and, and that's fine. But coming after Endgame and what they position this world to be, where we literally saw... Paul Rudd wandering around streets of deserted cars and there's memorials and there's counselling sessions and people are bursting into tears yeah, over dinner. Like high school goes back to normal it's again? Like, yeah, I yeah. don't buy yeah. I don't buy that this um, this quirky um, these quirky teachers and their fun trip and all of your, everything's just not everything is just normal. Yeah. They've just repositioned the world. And um, can we speak a bit about the thing that really annoyed me? And it really felt like a me. tonal shift. The like, thing that annoyed me most is go on. So, uh, we had thought that there was going to be um, multiple universes in this, right? Like they did in the cartoon. And then, uh, turns out, all it was, was that Jake Gyllenhaal, who's the baddie, makes a reference to a Spider-Verse, which I'm sh- presuming that's what they put in the trailer. Well, a multiverse. A multiverse. And Tom Holland has a kind of a brief moment where he kind of gets excited about the idea of multiverses. And then turns out that was all made up. And I thought, oh my God, you have to go to reference the amazing plot of a Spider-Man movie that came out last year that was a thousand times better than you and you have the gall to make a snippet about that just to get it in your trailer to lure unsuspecting people into your shit movie well this does this universe would also have a multiverse because we saw time travel and we've seen it in Doctor Strange they absolutely threw that in because of the success of the other movie I don't know, like, maybe. That's pathetic. They're like teasing people in. Like, I thought I was going to see a multiverse movie. 
And in fact, that's not at all what I saw. I actually think that's clever. I, I think it's really cheap. What did you think of the whole... I kind of saw the whole Mysterio stuff coming, though, because if you know the character, he's, an, he's a villain and he's an illusionist. I didn't... I'd never heard of the character. What I knew was that the, the kind of fish uh, baddies we saw for the first third of the movie, I was like, they can't be... I was like, I know Marvel do bad villains right I know they do oh, really the bad antagonists but I was like but these I was like surely even this movie can't have these as the villains so I thought maybe the elementals were going to take over Jake Gyllenhaal's body so I guess something like that I didn't guess that, that he was actually causing it like to but me that was kind of interesting you're right though like, but I was like these, but I actually almost thought oh my god the villains are going to be this bad in this movie they were boring and but this is the problem the first half of this movie because of the way they've set it up is lacking a villain and it's lacking any drive yeah. and motivation so there's nothing really pushing this movie forward until Jake Gyllenhaal and is trying to kill his friend. The only tension and is like, oh, he wants to sit next to MJ on the plane. Oh, no, he can't sit next to her on the plane. It's like, really? Because yeah, like, movie- I've seen really good rom-coms and really good TV movies, and or like teen movies, and like this ain't that. This movie's lacking impetus for quite a long time and I, I think you're right it, it, I, I was bored like I'm the I am the absolute <laughs> target audience for this and I was just like I mean this is this is okay I'm having a bit of fun I guess but like I'm like this is like a bit weak would you rewatch now, this? no I'm not I'm not in a rush to rewatch this you know the way all. you've ranked all of the Marvel movies no I don't want to do any no, of that I'm just curious is this down the bottom? I don't know. I haven't thought about it. Um, For me, it's the worst. Yeah, I've it's not. I, 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 it's not great. There's some good stuff in here, but as a package, it's weak. Um, I, I hope to God they don't make another one, and I hope it does badly at the box office. And schmucks like us. Well, let's. Come, I, I, there's a lot. There's a lot I do want to talk about here, though. I thought. Oh, the, you, oh my God! Sorry. I thought, I thought, thought podcast ever. I thought the Jake Gyllenhaal. Wait, 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 wait. Sorry. Did we get past this I thought, insight? I thought the um, the Jake Gyllenhaal stuff was fun though I thought the, the reveal that was fun that yeah. I like that he's not doing it alone though and I've liked that, see as a character he never really made a lot of sense that he just like what are, what's his power set he's an illusionist but how is he making these illusions so I, what, you I like him from comics yeah he's a very famous Spider-Man character but the and I think he's a very tricky one to translate to screen it's, it's the first time it's ever been done and I think they've did the best job they could while trying to keep it like grounded with holograms and drones I like which, that they referenced it back to the Robert Downey Jr. sequence yeah, we've seen a few movies that was great Yeah, um, and they even had one of the guys from the original Spider-Man or the original Iron Man and I think it's the same the same actor so it's like I like this idea of yeah, they linked Tony it well. Stark's again like we see this a lot coming up in these movies the impact that Stony, Tony Stark's legacy has on the people around him and because we just he's just this big bull in a china shop um, just wrecking things as he goes and we saw that in Civil War we saw it in Iron Man 3 with Guy Pearce's character who was also a um, a very similar villain in fact he was a um, somebody who'd been spurned by by Tony many years before so I, I like that I like that in rooting it back in the universe as the he's the driving force for these characters and I li- I, I quite like as silly as it is, it's because it's so silly to imagine this holograms and drones. Uh, it was fun though. I enjoyed that. It was, it was good. In. But what it I was enjoyed is that he's like, he's like, they're all so stupid, and they'll buy any old shit that I'm going to make up the most ridiculous story, and they're all going, they're all going to believe it. Yeah. And that was fun because that was actually the movie poking fun at how silly the universe is. Yes. And this is the only uh, this is the, this is the only part of the movie where I'm like this is the movie trying to maybe say something. Yeah. Um because there's a few ways you can read this whole thing. And they talk about and the there's false a few news pointed a lot lines. As well. Yeah, they, exactly. They, yeah. So there's definitely some sort of political allegory here with um with fake news and the media and what people are willing to believe and swallow. Um there's definitely yeah there's definitely a little bit of self-deprecation or a commentary on the movie industry yeah because I was thinking about it the this group of people when he addresses them and when you see them how they're putting all this together they're a, they're a little mini st- movie studio like yeah. they literally have the, the costume footage the designer the lighter the yeah. projector but he's what? the director and there's even a, a moment where they're basically in the edit suite he's yeah. got um, his 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 editor is like scrolling through the footage, and, and he says, writer. "Take this out. You know, I want to add that yeah. in. Uh, this doesn't quite look right." One bit that didn't make sense is in his, in his initial 
bar scene with Spider-Man where he gets him to give the glasses, which is the dumbest thing ever that Tony gave him Spider-Man, by the way. Um, oh, that was so they, contrived and annoying. Why didn't they just annoying. go to a normal bar? Why do they have to be in a fake hologram bar? Because th- then they could control it because he had... Oh, did you drop your glasses? Like, he never... Like, he engineered the whole thing, which is farcical. I mean, yeah, but like... Um, probably you don't need to have an entire hologram bar to like maybe just get a pickpocket to take the glasses out of his It's pocket. like um, spoilers spoilers for glass so if you don't want to know the end of glass skip forward like 20 30 seconds but it's like that bit at the end of glass where like <laughs> they only meet in like restaurants filled with their own staff. Oh yes, ridiculous. <laughs> and everyone just, just rent a room. <laughs> everyone waits for the normal room to leave. Yeah. And then they have their meeting. Yeah, it's, it's like absurd, Farcical. absurd. But it was a fun um, reveal to the audience. But I thought Jake Gyllenhaal was like too hammy with it then because he'd been playing it so straight and then suddenly he was so hammy and I just felt like no, but that's but again great. And he's a brilliant actor. I just felt like he wasn't given enough like to work with. I thought it was brilliant and I thought he was enjoyably over the top and I thought he absolutely nailed it. So I think. Kudos to them. They they brought Mysterio to life in a way that um, worked. Didn't feel like campy or silly. It was just a just borderline on the right side of that, and was a lot of fun. And Jake Gyllenhaal is like loving it. I just loving all that stuff of him surrounded in silly drones with a giant helmet on, going shoot them all. Like he was having a laugh. I wanted him to win. Like that's how much I wasn't rooting for anyone in this <laughs> yeah. movie. Like I thought. Fair play, you've got a great plan, you've got all the technology in the world behind you. Spider-Man was absolutely dumb enough to give you his stupid Edith glasses that he should never have had in his possession to begin with. Fine. Like, yeah. Spider-Man deserves everything he's getting. But but don't you think... So, if you scratch away at what this actually means, what it, what they're saying, is is if it is the movie referencing them, their movies, superheroes, like, people will buy anything these days. Like <laughs> that's really? We were that's actually, stupid movie. Like, is... is are these movies trolling us now? That, that's what it felt that's like. What it felt, it felt like. like you're actually like, telling us, this boring. hey, there's... Because they literally did that. They were like, they made us believe this stuff from the trailers because they had like, there's a multiverse. I'm from there. I'm a new hero, Mysterio. And that's kind of... And then it's like, they dropped the bomb on us. Well, luckily, it, we didn't watch the trailer. It's like, you guys don't believe anything because yeah, it's, it's, we it's, kind of will. It's honestly disrespectful to the audience. And I just it's think not it's, disrespectful. It it's kind of meta. It, and no, but no, no, not that plot. Just the whole movie in general. Oh, fine. It's just like, oh, we'll just get Spider Man and like we'll swing him around a few buildings and people will buy the merch. Um, yeah, and it's so funny. I speak. So we've got a son who's twenty-two months old, and he just from seeing pictures of Spider Man does not know what Spider Man is. Doesn't know anything about webs or flying is obsessed with Spider-Man just based on like the visuals yeah. so we're like oh my god that costume is like crack to kids oh, um, yeah, he, got, he, he's got, he screams about Spider-Man he in the living room. we're like why are you talking about Spider-Man <laughs> and if only he would know that we went to see a Spider-Man movie without him but yeah to me it's just like just go back to making kids stuff about it you know sell them the merch like we don't need to be sold this shit honestly um, I don't think I have anything else to say about it except that maybe talk about the end credit sequence do you? I'm definitely not going to see another Spider-Man movie for sure um, I think the yeah the, uh, that end credit sequence was like so great but so disappointing that that the most interesting thing in your movie is like a question that you pose at the end that, with no answer so, the, the so it's like was... that's 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 when you know your movie has failed I think that's that's a bad sign if like that's the oh, that's the only bit I woke up for I was like oh wow Actually, like that's wait, happened one thing before we get to the end credit sequence Sorry, we talked about this before with Avengers and after the Captain Marvel movie. Very early on in this movie, they're like, oh my God, it's the end of the universe if Spider-Man doesn't help from... Like, Nick Fury's chasing Spider-Man around Europe, right? To try and get him to help on this task. When, like, hold on a minute. Where's Captain Marvel? Yeah, I don't like, know. Once it just you says... introduce Captain Marvel to this universe, like, none of it makes sense. Why do you need this dweeby 16-year-old to they're, help you? They're, they're relying on this, they're off-planet, they're busy thing, but like... But if the Earth's about to be destroyed, I know, I know. like Look, what, she's niche, too busy off-planet. And I didn't really get the thing about, and I don't remember if this was in an end sequence or just towards the end of the movie, I didn't really get the thing about the aliens from the Captain Marvel movie pretending to be Nick Fury, what was that about? That was just pointless, he was on holidays or was he, on, was he somewhere else? And then there was another little twist where he was like... He's not on a beach. He's on an alien spaceship. Yeah, I don't I just know. I was so confused by that. I thought you Some, might have understood it. But somebody I tweet us about that. I don't know what before, was going on. Before we get to the... I think that was maybe the second end sequence, actually. Before we get to the big end sequence, though, 
the bit of the movie I liked, did you want to say? The only bit of the movie I liked was, um, and this is the bit that made me cry, but again, I think I was like between pain and boredom. You know the bit um, after all the stuff in London and Spider-Man and MJ like meet each other on like London Bridge or something. And they have this really sweet oh, moment yeah, where she sweet. admits she likes him and they kiss. And I actually cried at that. Like I thought, I thought that was lovely. I think they have lovely chemistry, like in a really sweet way. And I just really enjoy that. But like that was it. Like they made us wait the whole movie for that. And um, but onto the big end sequence. Basically, it's like. Firstly, the best thing about that is J.K. Yeah, Simmons, Simmons is Simmons back as J. Jonah Jameson, which is amazing. Why, who is, who does, I've never seen him in one He's before. from the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. They're playing the same character. He's the editor of the of Peter Parker's paper. Okay, that's Who cool. hates Spider-Man. Okay, that's good. It's, it's amazing. Okay, it's I like, just was like, oh, another famous face they're dropping in. I no literally reason. like, because there was, you know, there's no other person who could play him better than that guy. So just get that guy because he's so okay, good. Okay, that's fun. That is fun. But basically there was kind of two parts to this. So the first, first part is that Mysterio has released some fake news claiming that Spider-Man's a baddie who's droned him. Now, why would anyone believe that? Like, we didn't even see Spider-Man's mouth saying the words. It was like a shot of Spider-Man's leg. But and that's, then... that's the whole point. People will believe anything. And what it's on the news. Supposed... They even say it in the thing. In the movie itself, it says, but we saw it on the news, so it must be real. He's saying about um, Nightstorm or Night Monkey. But I was supposed to believe that in the next which movie. Which was funny. In the next movie, everyone's going to think Spider-Man's a baddie. I don't buy it, like. Because one person said it on the news. Well, yeah. I don't buy that. I but really I think, don't. look, I, yeah, it's a little bit of a stretch. Yeah. But then, hang on, I, have you looked at the world I we know, live in? I know, I know. Where, where Donald Trump is president? I know, I know. I'm just saying, like, it felt People a bit will thin. Whatever, whatever you want them to believe. I the media is incredibly powerful. The more interesting bit is probably that he said he's Peter Parker. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty amazing. That was cool, like, but, like, again, why wasn't that in the movie? Like, oh, basically, you have to come back and watch another movie. I know, that's like the thing. thing. It's, it's like... just cheating the audience. You're, if, it, if you're just going to, like, hint at something interesting but not have anything interesting around it, then I'm like... Uh, it's yeah, like, it's you're just, just You're just teasing me now. I just felt like tease like, going out. Like, you should have cliffhangers at the end of, you know, standalone movies. Like... It's fine to, to tease something, but something as big as everyone thinks Spider-Man's a baddie and Peter Parker's name's revealed, that's that's way beyond an end credit tease. Like, like that's a plot of a movie. Yeah, it's huge. Like, I just think it's really cheap. Don't make us watch him going to the opera in Prague. Like, let us watch that. Like, why do we have to wait for that? It's so weird. But um, then, no, but I think, we, I think I would have been fine with that if this had been a nice kind of more intimate character journey. Do you know what I mean? If we'd learn something about someone. Yeah, if if the, if the, if there was actual peril, like because even his plan, his mission of like, uh, you know, this is my plan, and I'm going to do this to MJ, and I'm going to buy her a thing. It all felt like just like there's not enough to this, and it did feel believably like something a teenage boy would come up with. Did and you I, feel like Aunt May was really crap as well in this? Yeah, she's just too like she was just background and upbeat and her and happy. That she's like it's that thing of like her only plot was like being his aunt and then being what's his face's girlfriend. Yeah, well, they give her nothing. Nothing, to do. and nothing. then she's just wearing a really weird wig that I didn't get. Like, why was her hair so long? I can't, no comment. I don't. I don't <laughs> want to do. Do you want to finish the podcast on the wig talk? I don't I'm know. Just really curious. Anyway, um, I don't. Oh, think and I, also they did this whole thing right where, where I thought you would have been really into this now, so it's good to get your feedback. They did this whole thing where, like, oh, my God, he's in Stark's airplane and he's building this super suit and it's going to be really thrilling. And then he came out and did nothing. It, like, his suit looked exactly the same oh, and he yeah. didn't do anything different. What? And we watched him building... Oh, no, no, he had, the, he had the wings. Okay, that was it, like... Yeah. And again, I saw him with wings and I was like, did he used to have wings? Like, I don't know. They didn't expressly say, that like... That was interesting, that bit, because they were kind of trying to allude that he is kind of the new Tony Stark. Yeah, that's the other thing because I don't get. Is he supposed to be the new Tony Stark? Because well, it's pretty lame. The movie's confused because... That's kind of what they're positing the whole time. And then Tom, uh, sorry, Peter Parker's like, no, I, I'm not ready for that. I don't want that. Um, Clearly, I'll give my glasses and then Happy, to anyone who looks Happy at me. Happy also says, you're not, you're not ever going to be him. Um, and then, and then Happy, so Happy says that, and it feels like we're all agreed, like he's not going to be the next Tony Stark. And then suddenly, Happy's got this little wistful look at him as he says, I'll put on some music, and puts on the exact same track from the first Iron Man as Tom Holland lo- does a load of, like, Exactly the kind of shit that Tony Stark. He's not going to be the leader of the Avengers, like. No, because we've a new. This is what I don't get. We've a new Captain America. Surely he's the leader. We got a new Captain America at the end of Endgame. Where's he? 
like, where are the I Avengers? Like, where, where like, actually one, are they? I'm not one to look for the Avengers because I don't really care for them. But honestly, I was like, J- having just watched Endgame, this makes no sense. Yeah. Um, anyway. Yeah. We've, but, I look, I'm sorry for you because I would have liked you to enjoy it more. Yeah, I didn't. I, I, I should have brought Oscar. I we didn't lost have it. a terrible time. It's totally fine. It's totally fine. Did, it's oh, just Dave, like, that's lovely. It, I didn't have a terrible time, and it's totally fine. That's a lovely review. It's just a huge disappointment. And I think they should be ashamed of themselves. And, and coming off the back of what probably is going to be my favorite movie of the year, Endgame, it's like it just feels like a damp, damp squid. Yeah. A little uh, puddle. Like, have they heard of anticipation? Like, I guess they just don't care. All they care about is making money. But like, honestly, yeah. they're just killing it. Anyway, come on. Let's, Okay, let's, let's wrap it up. up. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Let us know what you thought. Hopefully some of you enjoyed the movie more than us, because I'd really like to hear what people think. Um, tweet us or write to us on Instagram or Facebook or whoever you get in touch. Um, and please head over to iTunes and subscribe. Um, subscribe, r- rate, review. That would be amazing. And if you haven't already done so, check out our Patreon. It's at www.thecinemile.com forward slash Patreon, um, where we review... You don't have to say www. Don't you? Anymore. No, we're c- t- t- come on! <laughs> what year is this? What's 1998. You Patreon.com forward slash the cinema. Yes, what you just um, said. Say that. Where we do like loads of TV and movie reviews. So we've got a movie poll up at the moment, um, which is just finished, and just the, finished. And we can announce. We reviewed. That. What was what was the what did we posit in the poll? Movies about insects. Yeah, <laughs> we to do tie very weird Spider-Man. Stuff. Oh, today in Spider-Man. Right, okay. I didn't even get that. Insect movies. Insect so movies. So it is. All right, it, we have a tie. We are either going to be watching The Fly or Starship Troopers. Oh, we've never had a tie before. Uh, so we impressive. will have to decide. Maybe we'll flip a coin. I want to watch Starship Troopers. Me too. Let's just watch Starship <laughs> Troopers. All right, we're going to watch Starship <laughs> Troopers. Uh, so head over to our Patreon. That's going to be up. Uh, and we do be up there regular the TV reviews. So we just did, we just chatted on uh, loads of TV shows we were watching, including Black Dark. Mirror, Chernobyl. Oh, and we're going to be Killing watching um, Stranger Things Stranger this Things. weekend. Yeah, well. we're doing loads. Um, so yeah, head over, check it out, and thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. There's got to be someone else you can use. What about Thor? Off world. Captain Marvel. Unavailable. But I'm just a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Bitch, please, you've been to space. Acast powers the world's best podcasts. Here's the show that we recommend. I'm Jesse Cruikshank, and I've always been told I have a face for podcasting. So I launched a podcast. It's called Phone a Friend because each week I'll break down the biggest stories in pop culture. But when I have questions, I get to phone a friend. I'll phone a royal watcher to find out why Prince Harry is acting like a real housewife. I'll phone a tween to please explain euphoria. And maybe I'll even phone a Backstreet Boy to find out if I still have a chance. I don't? Okay. New episodes drop every Thursday wherever you get your podcasts. Acast helps creators launch, grow, and monetize their podcasts everywhere. Acast.com.